everyone. First WLPC. <laughs> so why am I here? Well, I, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So I had an idea, something that was troubling me for quite some time in a past life, and I uh, thought I might be able to solve it, and it kind of got a little out of hand, so here I am. <laughs> There's my Twitter tags if you want to see what's going on. Uh, about this, right? So, this is about roaming. Now, originally this talk was supposed to be delivered to you by Dan Jones, your uh, rookie of the year. He couldn't be here, so I, uh, I'm taking it. He was going to present my product as a user. He's taken this product on. He uses it in his business every day, every time he goes out to a customer site. And I want to show you why. He was going to show you, but I'm going to do it now. And it's about, it's about an application called Enoversight and how we can use it to understand the actual connectivity experience of a device. So, when you're creating a network, there's golden design guides. Now, I am not going to go there. You guys know tons more than I do. That is for you. You know what you're doing. And actually, even here, within the device, you've got the documented selection of the device. Right? So we know about this. That's out of the Apple's enterprise best practice, recommends how to uh, set up a network um, so that an Apple device will best use it. And it talks about a whole bunch of stuff. You've seen this before. I've seen it in other presentation presentations. At what trigger level does it uh, start to roam? You know, if you've got 11K, how that benefits? and what your secondary uh, RSSIs need to look like, depending on whether there's data moving or not. But, oops, I'm going the wrong way. There's something in the devices that we don't know too much about. Devices learn. They want to give you the best experience, so they take in knowledge, and they, and they learn, and they apply that. And that's not documented. Right. So the end user device has selection logic. And that goes way beyond your design parameters quite often. Okay? So the way it averages RSI, averaging is something that can be done a ton of ways. Is it a moving window? Is it a long static average? Is it, you know, what kind of, are you looking at medians or means? What about the history? Last time I connected to this BSSID, how well did it work? Is it is the device eager to get back to it? Or, you know, maybe it's on the naughty list. Apple devices got Wi-Fi Assist, multi-path TCP. You've got Quick coming through in Google devices. They're going to actually look at the best path. They, they're almost, almost less caring about what the Wi-Fi is like. Because, oh, we'll send a few packets over the cellular instead. So when you look at the advice of the manufacturer, be sure to use the target device. That's what it says. Why? Well, you know, we all know the antenna sizes are different. You're going to get different kind of cell boundaries based on the device, the way you hold it, the way you use it. That was Apple. This is me. We need to get basically understand the connection logic, which is not fully documented. So I'm adding that to the, dev to the, user, uh, the device specification. So what does, the, what does the manufacturer give you? Tools. No, not really. Who's used airport utility? Who still uses it every day? Right. Case in point, you know, RSSI channel, not enough. Exporting it and putting it in Excel. Do you have time? Do you get paid for that bit? It's like, you know, not great, really. So there's something else. And I want to take a moment to pause here. There's been kind of a, a feeling in the industry that Apple devices are just kind of no-go. Let's just accept the fact that we'll never really understand what it does. <laughs> I want you to know that we don't have to accept that, <laughs> right? Apple devices, like Android devices, are giving you logging information continuously. 
that logging information has a ton of useful info in it. A ton of it. And some, I know that some of you know about it. But who's looked at those logs before? Hands? Keep them up. Who developed a script? Who wishes they had a script? <laughs> right. OK. Because they're so horrible. Look at them. And they're changing all the time. And they're changing with every release. And they're asynchronous. And you've got lots of different subsystems going, oh, I'm going to tell you something. Well, is it about what I'm connected to, or what you're thinking about next, or what was before? I can't quite work that out. All right, so the information's there. But why should we be worried about that? That's, it's your problem. Why is it your problem? Anybody had that design requirement? <laughs> How about that one? And that one? Oh, whoa, 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 no. And that one? Right? So, <laughs> you know, we get that. And then, we, and then you design the gold standard, and you do what you can do. And you say, look, I've built this thing, and it works. And then you get a call. Yeah, but the CEO's still not happy. And you kind of go, oh, but I can't really tell. Why? I, I just don't know. OK. So can you give the customer what they want? Well, yes, here you go. That was what was bugging me for so long. I couldn't do it. I needed a way to get that info, to be able to say, look, this is what you, this is what you can get. This is it. And so here we are. This is an oversight. Taking those logs in real time and turning it into a graphical representation that you can see as you walk and export into a PDF and provide it. Now, who likes that? Thanks. <laughs> so I want to tell you, because we're all techies, so cool. I'm going to tell you how it works. Right, so you can get logs out of Apple devices, but you have to have trust. Now, that's a good thing, right? Because we don't want to be taking everybody's logs with all their, their personal details in it, because that puts us in an awkward position. When you actually connect a device to, to a, a Mac, you get a little logo up, don't you? Do you want to trust this device? In many times, if you connect it and the screen is unlocked, it says, Please unlock to enable accessories. These are all part of Apple's trust uh, mutual authentication. Once you've established that trust, the device is quite happy to go, here you go, I'll give you that information. So for you, it's this easy. Connect your device, download an oversight, launch it, and go. You can get yourself connected via a cable, walk around, and I'm going to show you this, walk around and start seeing exactly what's going on in the radios in your Apple devices. If you are on a network that supports multicast, we can bonjour in Apple language. We can unplug it and actually just leave it there. You can leave it sitting on a switch, and you can walk around. You can do that with three or four devices, hand them out to people, and have each person walking a floor of a building and have your surveys done in a tenth of the time. So hopefully, this is going to be useful for you. Right, so topic of the discussion was roaming. That's what was put forward, and that's what you guys voted to hear about. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. So what's in these logs? There's a ton of information. I'm only bringing out a fraction of it. My roadmap is pages long with what I can do. But roaming has been one of those things that it plagues us, it impacts voice, it impacts video, and how important has video become. So we need that to be good. Within an oversight, we're bringing out for each session, each time you change BSSID and we develop a session for that, information that is true to what the device is telling you. In the circle here, network found but filtered out by roam score logic. So you've designed a gold network. You went to the edge of range. You came back in. You think it should be roaming. The secondary is good, but the device filtered it. Is that useful? I think so. 
and others who are using this are just absolutely blown away by the fact that they can tell now this hasn't quite worked. And what we want to do is develop a metric, a hygiene rating that your customers can understand, something that is really quite simple. I've picked on three things, and I'd love your feedback to know about what it is you want to see in this metric. The three things that have bothered me so much in my past that I couldn't, I knew they impacted roaming and I couldn't put it to my customers would be RSSI, how good is it per session? Are you within your design targets? As far as that particular device is concerned. Loss of beacons is a critical failure as you go out of range or where you think you're out of range. And then something which, is, which I hate I don't know how you guys feel about it, but short sessions, if you've got really tiny sessions and that device is bouncing off of them, that's two handovers in a, in a couple of seconds, or three, that's actually even more impactful to the actual roaming experience. I've combined these together to form a score, and then you can get gold, silver, platinum, go, and, and poor. You can offer it over to your customers and say, look, I took your device with your MDM profiles, your authentication, everything yours, I took it around your building, and there's your gold rating. And when they have a problem and you want to sort of come back, remeasure re it, and they've moved some walls or some desks or whatever, you can walk around again and go, well, look, it's gone to poor. And there is why. So let me show you a couple of things. So there's a case study I did. Um, so I was really lucky to get uh, some mentorship support by our government, and they put me in touch with a bunch of uh, organizations. So this is an innovation center near me, and I was able to walk around, and I'll just... Here you can see us walking through a building with enterprise Wi-Fi installed. As we walk through, an oversight tracks and displays each access point handover. In some locations where coverage is weaker, an oversight highlights the issues. In this case, the iPhone is dragging on weak Wi-Fi until it eventually loses beacons before it hands over. In this example, we now have learned that the service in this kitchen area needs attention. It can be retested and compared after network updates are made. Moving on to another common problem area, a staircase. We can see that the iPhone is making numerous handovers between weak access points, and we know that anyone using an iPhone on a VoIP call could experience a drop. So that's just an extract from an explainer video I have. Does that help anybody? You find that useful? Great. It's just the beginning, and I really, really want you guys to tell me what, what can be done to even improve that. But I've got more. Not done yet. So I started going to different places, and I started a project to remove the tether. So that first one, the device was connected to the, to the Mac. But there is a slight issue in what the performance measurements are, because you've got what's called power in mode. The device sees power in, and the logic is affected by power in. It doesn't have to make battery optimizing decisions. It's quite good. Doesn't matter too much, but there'll certainly be corner cases and edge cases in there that you kind of go, I want to know without power how that thing works. So I started building a handheld solution, and this is me walking around a theme park. There's one in the UK called uh, Chessington. I uh, was there with my kids, and they love to see me playing with tech when I'm out with the kids. Yeah, they love it. No, uh, but anyway, we, we, were, we were having a bit of a play. We walked around, and we were recording. So this is a third-party network supplied by the cloud, which is actually Sky, which is Comcast company. And um, it, this was set up a long time ago. I'm not trying to say anything about it, but uh, it didn't perform very well. Look at all that red. And I'm going and relaxing the design parameters there in this video to kind of give it a bit of a chance. And now I scroll around, see what it's better. OK, it's a little bit better if, I've, if I'm letting this network go down to minus 80. And well, you know. Actually, from a pure RSSI point of view, I don't need it to be fantastic. People are just checking the ride queues, really. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter so much. But if you're Disney or somebody, and you, your brand is important, 
you don't want that bronze or poor experience badge, you know? Why can't we have the gold or the platinum on here? Right, you see a lot of stuff going on, and I, I've got time, so I'm going to take you through the product a little bit um, after I've shown you these use cases. It can also identify hidden issues. This is me sitting um, in a cafeteria attached to a hospital. I'm just sitting there waiting. And I'm plugging in just to see what's happening. So you can't see any APs. They're all hidden. They're all behind something. You know, I've heard enough from you guys about how that's not good. Um, I sat here, and on the device screen, nothing was happening. It looked good. I was connected. It looked weak, but nothing obvious was happening. When I plug this in, you can see every few seconds, it's switching between two BSIDs. And the device is banning a BSSID and switching to another one, finding it unacceptable, releasing the band, switching back, finding it unacceptable, releasing the band, switching back, draining power as it goes. A really bad experience. You know, somebody sitting in a coffee shop shouldn't be having that experience. It should be stable. But the designers didn't know. I mean, I'm sure you could see that in the, in the controller, but still. So, look, this was Dan's talk. He was the one who proposed it. And so he's given me a video, and I've masked his customer names. This is, how, this is what he was going to tell you about how he uses it. So he's got Wi-Fi signal from Adrian up in the corner, because he wants to know what the Mac's doing. He's got N oversight, because he wants to know what the device is doing. And he runs a real-time video call via Zoom and puts it on the screen and then screen records the whole screen. And then they go for a little walk. And they walk around a building. This is, this is part of, a, of a, a custom job. They're being paid to do this. And they walk around the building, and then they, they see there, look, there's red as you walk through that tunnel. So from that device point of view, now in the top, you can see the Mac was fine, 64, 64 dBm. But the iPhone wasn't too happy. Now we can see that experience difference. And you can look in on the session chart there on the, on the bottom right and see quite clearly that the iPhone had a problem with whatever it was. So that's, that's being used. OK, what next? Well, where do we go from here? Well, I talked a little bit about going mobile. Wouldn't, I, I realize that you know, not everybody has a Mac, but you will, you know, no matter if you're a Windows user, you might walk into a customer site. You might be able to see that customers using, you know, I've heard plenty of people here from education sector, from hospital sector saying, I walk into a site, I'm given a Windows laptop, corporate is standard issue, but the customers I'm dealing with are like 60 or 80% iOS. How do I deal with that? Well, the next logical step is for you to do it on the device remove the empower behavior. So I prepared a video, but I saw that there's lots of people being quite brave and doing demos of beta software. So here we go. <laughs> World first. So Fernet's going to help me. He has a WLAN Pro, w, WLAN Pi Pro, and something I called Nmirror. So what's happening is the lot, these two devices are Bluetooth connected. They're Bluetooth connected because I can't get multicast on this network, but Bluetooth does. Fantastic. Um, so the information from the NIC coming off through the logs, hitting the, the WLAN Pi Pro, being reflected back into an oversight running on the tablet, and then being decoded there. Right, so let me, so I've got a Zoom call running. So that is Fernet's tablet. Zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> Should have done, shouldn't I? Hang on. Hey. So Fernet is off, he's gone for a walk. 
See the, the bars, the orange, green, and red? That is the uh, green is his usage of the channel. And because we're running a Zoom call, it's using the channel. The orange or yellow is the, uh, the amount of energy it's detecting from other Wi-Fi, and the red is the amount of energy being detected, which is not decodable, no preamble. Um, so it's going off. Now, the Zoom call is, is a bit more flaky than this. Um, he, that's him walking live now. He just switched BSSID. And there's the RSSI. It dropped, and then it, it comes back up. It's a little janky because we're doing it over Zoom. Um, but that's him off, and we'll see when he comes back in the room, he'll reconnect. So the blue at the top is your RSSI, the green is your SNR, and the yellow is the amount of airtime utilization as reported by Apple. So he's switching various BSSIDs as he's out there somewhere. No Mac, just him and, the, and a pro. Doesn't have to be a pro. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> hey. So, what do you think? Okay. For now, you didn't run nearly as fast as Peter Thornycroft. <laughs> All right. That was my backup. I'm not going to show you that. We just did it live. So I need to give credit to the community. First of all, I need to give credit to you guys, the ones who've supported it, people who've bought it this week already on the, on the deal. Thank you. There was already people on the first day. That's amazing. Um, the people who provided feedback. The people who, before this was even ready and even for sale, I, I handed it out via Twitter. I made a comment. There was a discussion between UC and a bunch of people about Marvis, and there was a, people all of a sudden went off on a, on a tangent going, no, 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 you can't get this stuff from iOS. You can't do it. You can't do it. There's, there we go. There's my in. So I was like, hang on a minute. Have a look at this. <laughs> So I posted on there, and I put some, and the, it was like, whoa, we want to see it. So I was like, okay, right, you guys are my beta testers, this community. So I, uh, I gave them all copies, and everybody was just like, oh, can it do this, and can it do that, and can it do that? Mr. Parsons came to me, and we did a little video. Gosh, when I look back at the version on that video, <laughs> it's come a long way. So um, thank you. Thank you, and please keep helping me. It, it's really good. There's an open source community too, okay? So there's some really clever stuff that, you know, I couldn't have done. Um, so I started off by using standard Apple tools to get those logs. But there's a bunch of people in the open source community who have built tools that run on Linux. And the reason you could see that live demo today is because this open source community can provide those tools that are running on that Pi and a couple of people there who've kept them modified so that it can run over the Bluetooth and so on. And they're pushing really hard to do that. So with their help, I've been able to bring that to you. So that's me. That's the end. I still have five minutes, so I thought maybe I could um, just remind you that there's a, if you like it, you can download it. It's super easy, noversight.com. It'll redirect you to my numerous networks website. There's, uh, you, in your bag, you each had that uh, code. There's 50% off for this week. So that puts it at $75, which is about the cheapest thing I've seen this week, <laughs> <laughs> which makes it a no-brainer. Sales pitch over. <laughs> So um, I have a couple of minutes, so I, I just thought maybe, uh, would you like to see it in action? I'll just talk through, through some prior logs. Yep. OK. Right. 
This is uh, one I've set up demo net in my home. It's actually an Eero network. Um, standard home mesh. It was fun. Find out lots of stuff about Eero. Guess what I found out about Eero? If I ran the network cable next to the power brick, when I started transferring traffic and there was data going over that cable, the little red interference bars went up. And the only way to get them down was to put about that much separation between the network cable and the power brick. Not rocket science, but who would know? Not a consumer at home. How many times have we run them close together? Yeah. So um, what it lets you do uh, when you go on to do this is you can, you can if you own a pro copy, there's a, there's a very cheap basic copy, so just monitoring and learning. So that that's the helps people who just want to learn about iOS. If you're using it to provide uh, service, you can put it into a record mode. You connect your device, and then you can record. Once you've recorded it, it gets saved out to a file. You can reload them in at any time. So this is one idea at home. You've got your Wi-Fi. You've got. Uh, down the bottom, you can change to see different views, so you can look at your timelines. You can click on those. You can see exactly what's gone, in each, gone on in each session. There are stats, histograms, show you what your profile of RSSI looks like in that scan. All the different BSSIDs you've seen. There's the ANOVA score, the hygiene rating and the uh, advisories that come out that say what is contributing to that low score. And then uh, the thing that Dan specifically asked me to, to mention to you guys is, uh, well, A, you can set your design targets up, but you can also, um, for anyone looking at handovers, you can also see the cell side of it. And then you can scan through your historical files. And at the, there's, there's some interference there. And at the time when your Wi-Fi signals are getting low, so we can go and find one that was low-ish here, minus 75. Well, look, I had four bars of, of uh, EE signal. So if I did hand over at that moment in time, it would be OK, and so on. And then finally, for your customers, you hit that, produce a PDF report. All of these charts pop into a report and you deliver it. And that's it. Done.